Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm running a couple of minutes behind this morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's go ahead and begin with uh, prayer and we'll get started and we'll pick up where we left off last week talking about the faith journey of Abraham and I'm spending a little bit more time on this one because I want us to see that Abraham though called the father of our faith no different from the human perspective than us and and I really want us to get um, a sense and an idea that there was nothing superhuman or, or super extraordinary uh, about these Old Testament characters. They were real people, flesh and blood, just like us, but God just chose to do some extraordinary things through those ordinary people. So let's pray and we'll jump right into where we left off uh, on last week. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord, for all of your blessings. We're thankful, Father, for the the privilege that we have to be called children of yours. We're thankful for the blessing and the benefit of just being um, connected to you through Christ Jesus. Lord, when we were lost in our sins, you loved us so much to send Christ down the cross for our sins. And we're so thankful for that. We could never pay you back for that, nor would we ever try. <clears throat> but Lord, we acknowledge your your, your unfailing love for us, and we pray that we can live lives worthy uh, of that example. Help us to be kind, merciful, loving one to another, and showing the love of Christ in our lives in everything that we can do. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. We thank you, and we love you for this and all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just catch us up real quick, and then we'll jump right back in. Good to see everybody with us this morning. Again, talking about the life of Abraham. And I get strength and encouragement from, from Abraham because he's relatable. There's a few characters in the Bible that are more relatable to me and my personal circumstance than, than others. Um, Peter is one of them. I've told you that before. Abraham is another. Especially when you look at how his faith journey will ebb and flow and that's what I'm talking about here we started in chapter 18 and we, we entertained the question is anything too hard for the Lord and you remember the angels came and paid a visit the men the messengers whatever you want to call it paid a, a visit and, and and he entertained those three men and remember he said after they had had a chance to eat and, 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 and had something to drink. They asked where Sarah was and said, oh, she's in the tent. And, and they gave some, some news that was unusual for uh, elderly people to hear. This time next year, Sarah's going to have a baby. And oh, by the way, Abraham, you're going to be the father. Well, she reacted to that news a, not, a lot like I would react, react to that news. I would bust out laughing. Well, she did. And again, we talk about how that was a faith episode or a faith journey. And really, when it comes to our relationship with God, that's the way it is, isn't it? Our life with him is a faith journey. It, 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 it ebb and it flows. Sometimes our faith is up and it's stronger than ever. And then there are times when, sadly, our faith is in the valley and we struggle and God has to help us through that. The problem, and I, get, I took off from this, the problem wasn't the, the fact of Sarah's laughter. <clears throat> her laughter reflect, reflected her unbelief at that particular time. I wouldn't turn that on because of the, uh, it's off, because of the, all the smell that's going to come through the building. This one's on, but that one I don't want to turn on because I think it's going to run us out of here. Um, unbelief is a more serious sin than we realize. To doubt God's promises is almost tantamount to calling God a liar. And I don't know if y'all played this game in Texas, you who are, are native Texans, but in Georgia as kids, we, we had a game and we'd put a stick or an object or something on, on, our, on our shoulder and we'd walk up to somebody else and we'd dare them to knock it off. And when they knocked it off, well, there was some trouble to be had. Y'all played that game in Texas? Okay. There was some trouble to be had. It's almost like we dare God 
during our times of unbelief, it's almost like we put a stick on our shoulder and we walk up to God and we dare him to knock it off. How dare us? <laughs> how, how really, how dare us? And so in Genesis 18, I think you see one side of the faith of Abraham and the faith of Sarah. Sarah came through it, but I wanted to use that as a jump off point to really talk about the faith when it comes to our faith journey, because that's an example of, of really how our faith ebb and our, our faith flows. And so the key is, in all things about our faith, and we'll go to the next part of this, in all things about our faith, God brings us to the end of our own physical strength, so we have no choice but to trust him. Because in, in the case of Abram and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, a, a 90 plus year old lady uh, having a baby, you can own, that was only God. You can't, you can't put anything else to it. That was only God. And that's how our faith journey really is and should be. God will get us to the point to where he's about to do something in our life and take away that human factor and that human equation so that there is no doubt in anybody's mind when they see that it was only God. So let me show you what I call the ebb and flow. Remember they had the three visitors in Genesis chapter 18. Then after that, God and Abraham have a conversation and he's pleading for Sodom. Turn to Genesis 18. I'll just highlight this just real quick and I want to move, I want to move forward. Genesis 8, 18, he now pleads for Sodom. And we mentioned last week, um, really this is a high point in his faith because now when you're getting to the point to where you're, you're, you're asking or you're praying or you're serving for somebody else on their behalf, you're using your influence, you're using your, re your relationship, that's really a high point of our faith. Look at verse 16. Uh, God's got his mind made up. So Sodom's gone. It's, it's gone. Abraham says, when, he, when the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them there and saw them on their way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? And Abraham uh, will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on the earth, will be blessed through him, for I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household to keep them the way of the Lord by doing what's right and what's just. You remember last week we said that no matter how bad bad gets, God still has a remnant. Even though evil in Genesis uh, chapter 1, man's heart was wicked and he did evil continuously, God still keeps a remnant. And, and, and in, in Genesis 1, it was through Adam and Eve. Now, through Sodom and the evilness there, it's really going to be all about Abraham and his remnant. Look at verse 20. The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous that I'll go down and, and, and see if what they've done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. And then the men turned away, and Abraham gets into this dialogue um, with God, and he, he says, now, Lord, look, uh, I don't mean any harm. Now, don't look for, I don't mean any harm. It's not in there. But, but, but Abraham's argument is this. Why, why I love this expression, why throw the baby out with the bathwater? If, if, if there's just a few righteous people, are you going to destroy the whole thing for a few righteous people? And, and, and I told you this before, Abraham kind of goes back and forth uh, with God, almost like a, a barter. Look at verse 26. Uh, the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I'll spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is uh, five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for, lack of, uh, for those people? In other words, Abraham's faith now, I think, and you were right last week, whoever made the comment, you were right. Abraham's faith now is on the peak, and he's asking not behalf, on behalf of him, but he's asking on behalf of 
um, those righteous that are in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know the, the end of the story. Ultimately, God does destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abram, he left, and Abraham returned home. And now God's going to really get to the point to where he does exactly what he says he is going to do. Look at chapter 19. Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed, but I want you to see the ebb and the flow, just the ebb and the flow of faith and, and, and really doing the right thing when it comes to our relationship with God. Uh, did you have your hand up, Shayla? No. Okay, look at, look at chapter 19. I'm going to open up in a minute. Solomon Gomorrah is destroyed in chapter, 19, in chapter 19, verse 1. Two angels arrive at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city, and he first saw him, he got up to meet him, and he bowed down to the earth with his face to the ground, um, kind of a form of respect. Uh, again, the, the Old Testament word, uh, obeisance, he bowed before them. My lords, he said, please turn your, your, your side to your servant's house. I can wash your feet and spend the night um, and then go on your way early in the morning. Again, we talked about this hospitality um, back at, at, at its finest in the day. No, they answered, we'll spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and they entered his house. He prepared a meal for him, um, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Does this remind you? Of, of chapter 18, the beginning, when the, the three men came to visit. This, this is remnants of that to me. Um, he prepared a meal. Before they had all gone to, med, to bed, all the men from every part of the city, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called out to Lot, where are the men uh, who came to you tonight? Bring them out to them. Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet him, and he shut the door behind him, and he said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters um, you can, you, who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do with them as you would like. Um, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Again, just like faith ebb and flows, look at how bad bad can get. That's not good English, but, but look at how bad, bad got. And, and really, again, I think it shows through the line of Abraham, God still keeps a remnant. Now, they're going to get, they're going to get some instructions. Abraham, I mean, uh, Lot's going to get some instructions to leave. What's his instruction? God's still going to destroy the city. He's still going to do it. What instructions does God give Lot in order to leave and go to safety. Anybody remember we read last week? What, what, we, what instructions does Lot get uh, to, 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 to flee the city and go to safety? Don't look back. Okay, you, you better get to stepping. <laughs> and I mean, don't look back. And we spent a little bit of time uh, talking and having fun with this last week. And the bottom line, I think, is God means what he says when he says what he means. Is it fair? Is it just? Is it unfair? I'm just saying... What, what happened with Lot's wife, she turned back, she looked back for whatever the reason, and you remember what happened? She what? What happened to her? Turned into a pile of salt, pillar of salt, whatever you want to say. Um, one of the comedies that I enjoy uh, watching reenacted this, and uh, I, this is funny to me. It's not going to be funny to y'all because I have a, a dry sense of humor. It's after it all happened, you know, Lot had a plate of food. And she's standing there, and she's a pillar of salt, and he takes his food and just scrubs a little bit of salt. Okay, that wasn't funny. It's, it's, it's funny to me, but it was. But God, Jimmy, you got the same sense of humor. God meant what he said. In other words, as faith ebb and flows, our obedience to God should not ebb and flow. Okay? And however we, we get God's instruction, and no matter what the consequence, we ought to always do what God says like he says to do it. So you see the three visitors. Then he pleads for Sodom. Faith is up, I think. Now Solomon and Gomorrah is destroyed. Um, and, and really kind of you see the faith kind of wane and go down. Now it's going to come back up. Because I think here in uh, chapter 19, verse 30,
and verse number 30. And I'm interested to hear your take on faith when it comes to this section. I'll read the section and then let's talk about it. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in a cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, our father is old and there is no man around to give us children, as is the custom over all the earth. Let us go to our father, uh, no, I'm sorry, Let, let's get our father to drink wine and sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got their father drunk with wine and the older daughter went in and slept with him and, and he was not aware of it when she laid down and when she got up the next day. The older daughter said to the younger, last night I slept with my father, let's give him uh, to drink wine again tonight that you can go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father drunk um, to drink wine that night and the younger daughter went in and slept with him and again he was not aware of it when she laid down and when she got up. Verse 36, so both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son and she named him Moab and the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger daughter had a son and she named him Benami, which is the father of the Amorites to this day. Talk to me now Talk to me now about faith in this episode. Again, I think faith journey is, is what ebb and flows. But let's talk about what do you think in this section? Talk to me about faith and the faith journey. What stands out to you in this, in this section? What do you think? Go ahead, um, Ernest. Lack of faith. Okay, I said faith journey. You said lack of faith. Not that I'm disagreeing. Not, not that I'm disagreeing. I just like to have fun. <laughs> lack of lack, faith. Lack of faith. Just, I mean, the daughters really wanted to protect the lineage. You know, God, God would provide if they'd ask. I mean, he would have done it in his time. But, but their intent was pure. No. No? no? no. Wow. They're going to beat me up. They go, I mean, they're going to beat me. Mama, they ain't going to let me. I'm going to have to go out this back door today, okay? They, they, mm -mm. Tangina, go. Wait a minute, Shayla, go ahead, Tangina. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I say that around the house a lot. Um, my wife and I don't eat the same type of food. And like this morning, she had blueberry muffins. And I can't stand blueberry. I go back, is it good? Yeah, it's real good. Ew. And I just walk away. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. It's not like there was not going to be other men around, and how did they know? So they took matters in their own hands. Okay. And that's where our trouble begins. When we don't rely on God to take care of something, we take it into our own hands. And we okay. Screw it up big time. So we mess it up, and it's worse than when we got a hold of it than if we had just left it alone. I'm just saying. Shayla, go ahead. Anybody else after this? Shayla, especially your comment, because I had the same, you know, why in the world is this in the store? Yeah. In the box? There's nothing redemptive about this at all. Yes, <laughs> but I, I think if we back up a little bit, 
I think we can see it. Because I had the same, I, I thought the same way. I thought the same way. Who else? Go ahead. But, all right, they, they messed up. They messed up. They had kids. They did. And like it says, <laughs> one was named Moab, and the other was Am Am I, am I, yes. their, their people were then enemies of Abraham. Yes, sir. So it, it, it not only messed up a couple, it messed up millions. Generations. Yeah, yeah. So my actions, no matter, I'll be right there telling you, so my actions, Jimmy, no matter good or bad or well-intended, I don't think about the long-term consequences. Not, am I, not only am I just affecting me and mine right here, down the road, I'm affecting me and mine for generations. How am I, how, is that fair? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I've got a bad problem when I'm on Facebook. I like to watch all these little videos. You know, my wife's like, you, you, it's all you do is watch them. And I like to watch the ones <laughs> where they're out the dash cam mm -hmm. and the wrecks. And it's like, I like a lot of times that one person is going crazy and he may escape, but he has caused so many problems along the way. You know, we, we don't see the big picture sometimes. We're, we're focused on ourselves. I think that's what these girls, they're focused on their self rather than, wait a minute, let's just follow the plan. Tenji and I'll be right there, but Mandy has said this from the very beginning, actions have consequences. And what we do now has rippling effects. I think that's the way I want to say it. Um, but sadly, guys, I, I don't think about that. I, can, I can't speak for y'all, but I don't, I don't think about that. I just think about me and what I want right then, and that's usually my problem. Tangina, go ahead. When you look back at where they lived and all of the sin that was so rampant around them, even though it was more showing the men were wanting the other men, that had to have had some kind of effect on the women. Right. And then again, when in your mindset, right and wrong, sometimes gets to you and you're not even aware of it until certain situations. They spent a long time. They knew evil, but yet it might not have affected them the way it was affecting men and men and men, but it had to affect the way they think as far as right and wrong. And, and a lot of times when we're in situations and we allow people to do things around us, drink around us, cuss around us, do all kinds of things, we don't realize that sometimes we're literally allowing some of that mindset to affect us, and we don't realize it until we get in certain situations. And then that, and that's how it, it, it kind of um, comes forward. It comes, it comes out. Uh, Mandy, I'll be right there. I told you all my Apple story when I, when I got busted when I was younger, driving back uh, to the store, and not only did I get a busting, I think I had to work at that little corner store um, every day after school for a week. And, and I've thought about this a lot since I told you all the story. I really don't eat apples, and I really think to this day, to this day, I thought about this. I think that's the reason. <laughs> I really do. I think that's the reason. But our, our faith journey ebbs and flows. Our actions have consequences. Go ahead, Mandy, let's throw some more in here. He had just, well, not just, but he had offered them to the man. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He had what now? He had offered his Oh, the daughters to offer Okay. Them. There was a relation issue. Yeah. How okay. are they thinking that they would have any self-worth when their father didn't think they had any? Wow. Wow. Go ahead, uh, Shayla. That's what I was going to say, that, that there's, there's a bigger picture here. Okay. Okay, there is a, there's a larger picture. So let me step back, because I want to go to the next one. If you love this one, you're going to love the next one. Um, I, let me step back because I think a lot of times we, we, we look at things and we look at it too granular, granularly, but, but if we step back, we'll actually see um, a larger picture. Several itch issues that's in this text that y'all help you know, bring to the forefront. The biggest one was a lack of faith and a lack of trusting in God. I understand how they got to the daughters got to that decision in their mind this was the only choice because we're looking around and we don't see a solution they took matters into their own hands but really that factors out God in the bigger picture 
And I like somebody said it, just because they didn't see any men in that area, how do you know God wouldn't have brought some men from another area? I mean, we got to back up and we got to trust God. Now, I can't beat them up too much because I think I'm the same way. You're the same way. Sometimes we get in our lives and we try to get a step ahead of God and we want to figure things out and work things out on our terms and bad gets worse. That's terrible English. But, but, but bad gets worse. So I think we need to learn from this. Even though our faith journey ebb and flows, we need to work on course correcting. One of the books I read, can't remember the title right now, said, life is a journey. You need to learn how to take one step and then course correct. <laughs> take, take one step and then evaluate and then course correct. So I think... Even though this is here, I think for the greater good, and Sheila, to answer our question, I think it's here as an example to show us how not to do a thing. I think it's an example to show us, look how bad bad gets when you let God's hands go, or when you take matters into your own hands. I think that's one of the examples here. What else? Anything else on this one? You like this one, just hold on. <laughs> Grab your popcorn. <laughs> We're fixing to go again. Now, the, again, the faith journey is going to ebb and flow. Go to chapter 20. That's why I wanted to spend some time on, on, on this faith journey. Now we're going to be introduced <clears throat> to Abraham and King Abimelech. Okay? Abraham and King Abimelech. Now, Abraham moved <clears throat> on from there to the regions uh, of the Negev south, um, and he lived between Kadesh and Shur. And for a while, he stayed at Gerar. Um, and there Abraham said to his wife, buckle up, buckle up. I'm just telling you, that's my word, buckle up. Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman that you have taken. She is a... She is a married woman. Go ahead, Shayla. Is she 100 years old? Then we're going to keep going. <laughs> and okay. I had it wrong. I said hadn't been Right. Wrong. We're going to Okay. Keep, we're gonna, okay. I promise we'll get there. I promise. Okay. Sorry. But that's, that's good thinking because that's exactly what I want you to put together. Okay? Uh, I lost my spot. I am terrible. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. She is my sister. Then Abimelech said, uh, King of Gear sent for Sarah, and he took her in. But God came to them uh, in a dream one night and said to him, you're as good as dead, because the woman that you have taken, she is a married woman. Abimelech had not, going, had not gone uh, near her, so he said, Lord, uh, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say, he is my brother? I have uh, done this with a clear conscience, and clear hands. Abimelech's kind of, okay, Lord, look, now I know I'm on the chopping block. Uh, as y'all native Texans would say, I know I'm on the hook for this, but let me let, let me defend myself. <laughs> let me let me speak up for myself before you, you know, drop the drop the hammer. Then God said to him in his dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. So I've kept you from sinning against me. Circle that, because I don't think that's I think that's God's mode of operation. If we're open and if we listen, I'm giving you mine now before anybody says it. If we listen, God circumstantially in our life, no matter how bad we get off the path or what happens to us, God circumstantially will keep us from sinning against him. Yes, I know you did this, so I kept you from sinning against me. That's why I didn't let you touch her. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. And he'll pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned his officials, and when he told them all that had happened, um, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said, What have you done to us? How have I wronged you? that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom. You have done the things to me that should never be done. Go ahead, Abimelech. 
And Abimelech said to Abraham, what is your reason for doing this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, this is surely no fear of God. There is surely no fear of God in this place. And they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is, uh, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not my mother. She became my wife. And God had me wander from my father's household. I said to her, this is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah, uh, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, my land is before you. Live wherever you like. And to Sarah he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense um, against you before all who were with you. You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God. And God healed Abimelech and his wife and his female slaves so that they could have children. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving because of Abraham, Sarah's wife, or uh, because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. All right, let's talk. I said if you like that one, you go, you go, you're going to love this one. And why am I doing this? Why do I take the time? I can just skip over it. You know what? These are real circumstances, real people, real events, and how dare us think that we might not make some of the same choices and the same decisions, okay? So let's talk. What do you think? How do you see, how do you see this one tied in to the faith journey? Mandy, go ahead, please. I think Moses should apologize to whatever his name is. Abimelech. Abraham should apologize to Abimelech? He owe him an apology. He sure did. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Yeah. Now, I don't read anywhere where that ever happens, I but I'm just saying. I, didn't <laughs> I don't. I don't read that. Okay. Go but ahead, John, Jimmy. But like I said, he really didn't lie because it was his sister. I know that he, he, he led him around. <laughs> but but I, yeah, I know. I think he did just like <laughs> Lot's daughters. I'm going to take things into my own hand. I'm not going to trust God to get me out of this. I'm a different sister. And I think that's where we go into we go into problems. We have a lot of fun reading about this. And you're right, there was not the um, apology because you know I, I really now this is me. Y'all can talk about me all you want. I think had God not intervened, this would be a different end to the story. Okay, I mean God came to him. Look, dude, he didn't say dude, but I mean you're, you're a dead man. You can do what you. Own. I love the. I don't have a good Texas accent. You can do what you own. But I'm a kid. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's horrible. And so God came, and God really intervened. And I think we're seeing again, remember the circle I told you about? Um, sometimes our faith ebb and flows. Jimmy, you're right. Technically, you're right. <laughs> you know, but it's that sometimes we, in our lack of faith, it, it makes us dance on the head of a pin when really uh, it would be easier just to go ahead and say, look, let the chips fall where they may. God, I'm going to trust you to get me out of this. I, I hear you. I'm just saying that we, we, we really need to do that. Go ahead, Mandy. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't. Abraham's silent through this whole thing. I mean, I don't read. Y'all help me here because I don't. Abraham too silent. <laughs> I mean, he's, and I think I have a, I have a theory about why, but again, it may not apply to uh, scripture. There are certain times when I've gotten myself, I've dug myself in so deep. What can I say? Ain't nothing I could say, except Lord, forgive me and help me out. We don't even see that. That's my again. That, that's just my my perspective. So let's talk about faith for a second. Let's talk about faith. What, what do you see? Lack of. Lack of, okay. I started to say that, but I did. Lack of, okay? And we get into, oh, we get into some jams. And uh, again, who, who concocted this plan? Where did this plan take its, its origin? 
Maybe that's the reason. No, 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 but no, no. I'm saying that's the reason your your original point is is so valid to me, because here you are, Joker. You gonna concoct this plan, and then you gonna be quiet when it goes sideways. And get all the <laughs> records. Look at all he got for concocting it. Wait a minute. Get what? What you say? All he got. Oh, yeah. All the riches and he got servants stuff. and stuff. He got stuff. He got yeah, Abimelech. He, yeah. He's, he's gonna want to be the one that's gonna take all the heat for it, and he was just stunned. He just found him a woman that he thought was and legit. Fair, was fair game. I yeah. hate to say it that way because yeah. women aren't game. But so yeah. it was, you know, fair, fair, fair game. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, if it wasn't for God tapping him on the ship when he came in the dream, but if it wasn't for God, and I, again, y'all can beat me up later, had God not intervened, this story would have been a whole lot different. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and, and so here we go. Abraham concocts the plan. And then he's silent throughout the rest of the episode. I saw a hand. Ernest and then Sheila, go ahead, please. How come Sarah didn't say anything? How come she did <clears throat> not say, I'm married? Because she was obeying her husband. And that was good, good question. Good I mean, question. We, women have rings these days, and I, don't, I just don't know the testament at the time. They were, they well, were according to, and I agree with Mandy, she was being obedient and following her husband. Okay? Now, hold that thought, because we get... Well, it won't be her, but hold that thought. We're going to get to talk about a set of twins, and Mama is not going to be so tired. Silent. Matter of fact, Mama going to concoct the plan. But when it comes to the twins, we'll get there. I promise. We'll get. There. So I don't know the answer to that question, but you would think if wrong is being conceived or done, somebody needs to speak up on the sake of truth. Sheila, go ahead. Okay, I want to know more about Abimelech. Was he? What? Who was he a king of? What nation? I've got to go back and look up because I didn't. I didn't look up all the details yeah. with, with the kingdoms and all of that. But but I want to. I want to say he was quite a prominent king, and I'll bring that. I'll bring that to you next next week. He was quite a prominent king with a vast kingdom and known for treachery. The reason I say that is if if that's not true, then anybody crossing his land would be afraid for their life. That's why when it comes to Abraham's plan, I halfway understand it. I don't agree with it, but I halfway understand it. Look, we should have crossed this way. And I want you to say, uh, because really he's afraid for his life. But I gotta bring you more detail on a go let next week. I'll bring that to you. Well, What's your thought? My my thought is why is he held to this high level of standard by God and all these other people that did similar things Maybe not. they got away with it. That's my homework for next week. I'll bring it to you. That's my homework. Okay? I'll bring you a more detailed look at uh, at, at Abimelech. Okay? He's the king of the GR. Yeah. Yes. But that was a that was a large region of the country back then, and I do know that particular region um, was was known for treachery. You didn't cross borders back then without express permission, and I mean you would be you'd be gone. So I think that's a lot of the motive, Shayla, as to why, but I will do some homework and I'll bring you that. I'll bring you that next week. Go ahead, Sister Bamble. Uh, My time is gone. I've been having too much fun. Go ahead. When I was looking at verse 11, Abraham said, and even though there was a lot of, you know, you didn't cross boundaries and things like that, I thought there was, there is no respect for God in this place. He had just come from the situation near Sodom and Gomorrah, but yet, Again, everybody knew the reputation this, ha this place has. But a lot of times, we'll hear a reputation about somebody and then we'll perceive in our own mind one thing instead of letting God's perception be the rule. And you know, God can use a donkey, whoever he wants to Absolutely. use to get his point across. But it was at this point in this situation that Sarah's womb was actually open. Wow. When wow. you look at the bottom, toward the bottom, mm -hmm. Um, then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech. He also healed his wife and his female slaves so they could have children. Uh, let's see, I think it's a little bit more that. Um, the Lord had kept all the women of Abimelech in his house. Whatever. From conceiving yeah. because of, in other yeah, words, this because, one bad thing yeah. kind of was a stopgap <clears throat> for all the women in Abimelech's house not being able to have children. And when we course correct, blessings come as a result of that. Um, even for generations, the same as the curse, but the same as the blessings. It was something I was reading, uh, and I'll have to find it again. So let's do a wrap up. One more, one more minute. Let's do a wrap up. If you were to
to give me one thing from all of these that we've read, these, I call them vignettes, but they're not. If you were to give me one thing from these vignettes that would help my spiritual walk, what would it be? One more minute. If you could give me one thing from these three that we've read this morning, that have helped me along my spiritual journey, what would you say? What would you, what would you say? One, one word. One, uh, one phrase, one sentence, one. You, you, you can almost say patience. Okay. You've got time. I got time. Let, let, let him do it. You, you just sit back and, okay. and let it let, let, it, let, let it God go. handle it. Let, it go. let God handle it. Sheila, go ahead. Bad gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad does get worse. It's, it does. Your, it's your statement. It, well, it is, but I'm just, you say that. <laughs> bad does get worse. If we don't trust God, if we take matters into our own hands, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it a lot worse. Ernest, did I see your hands? Yeah, I'll just you back what you did. You said it, and Jimmy had had the concept of trusting God. Just trust God. Have faith. Just have faith. Absolutely. Just have faith and trust in God. We'll continue this. Uh, next week, I'll answer Shayla's question, and we'll move on to one more in uh, Abraham's faith journey. Any other questions, comments? Thank you all very much. We'll start our morning worship shortly.